That front end is up pretty good. Definitely gonna put the Hemi in her place. Make her work for it, that's for sure. What is going on today, guys? My name's Alex. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are putting my Ram 2500 Power Wagon to the ultimate towing test. We're gonna be towing this trailer across the country for about 14 hours straight, and we'll see how it does. But first, we did just pass 10,000 subscribers, which is honestly a little bit wild. And I do kind of want to apologize because I know the last couple of months there haven't been too many adventures with the Power Wagon. It is because once again, we are moving and it's just been, there's so much stuff to do and I do still work a full-time job. So there is gonna be a really cool video coming out uh, with us uh, pulling a trailer for like 14 hours with this truck. Should be anywhere from like eight to 10,000 pounds. So a good challenge for the power wagon. And uh, once we get up to New Brunswick, there is gonna be lots of off-road stuff to do. So I'm excited for that. and. Thank you for everyone for their support. So I'm sure you guys have noticed this is a, a different spot and well, this is my new place, my new home in beautiful New Brunswick and we are super happy to be here. But I figured I'd take you guys along for the towing journey. Um, now, first of all, this is probably more for me and my records than it is actually you guys, but I think there is some good towing information and there is some cool towing clips. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Cheers to our old apartment. Ooh. What a disaster. Ah, it's a work in progress. <laughs> yes, it is. Disastrous. All right, guys, so this is the trailer. It's a 16 by seven trailer, enclosed obviously. It's got the Vinos up front, which I think is really gonna help when we're on the highway. It's obviously my truck. And uh, you guys can notice, that rear end is already starting to sag. And let me show you what's actually in here already. So, so far we got my toolbox. Now that's the heaviest bit. And that's probably right over the axles. The top box, it is a little bit heavy. And then my cart, which is probably the lightest. So we really don't even have that much weight up front. A couple tires, which don't really weigh that much. Well, we got 43 on the fender stock. Well, I guess not stock, but this thing sits normally at 44 inches high. So we've already dropped an inch with really no load. This trailer weighs, I believe, 2,400 pounds right around there dry. With my toolbox and the little stuff we have, probably an extra, I don't know, 1,000 pounds, give or take. So probably right around like 3,500 pounds. And this thing's already dropped an inch. So we will have to really watch out for the tongue weight. I'm looking to probably have this thing right around eight to 9,000 pounds. That's kind of what I'm estimating this thing is gonna weigh. I'm sure a lot of you guys know the Power Wagon does not have a very high payload rating. Uh, this thing's like just under 1,500 pounds, which is pretty small for a 2500. But what is nice is with the 2500, you get a class five hitch. You get a two and a half inch receiver there, which is nice because the class five uh, hitches are just rated so much higher. Like this thing's rated for 13,000 pounds. The ball, I believe is 14,000 pounds. I think one thing a lot of people don't realize is on your Ram 1500s, it's a class four hitch, I believe. Um, and it's rated for only 600 pounds of tongue weight. That's it. Uh, so realistically, you can only pull 6,000 pound trailer um, with a 10% tongue weight. And with a class five hitch, you can pull 1,000 pounds without having a weight distributing hitch, no problem. So it gives me a lot of uh, flexibility and we don't have to worry too, too much about the actual numbers because realistically, the ball, the receiver, as well as the hitch are all going to probably be um, overrated for what we're towing. So we ended up getting this thing pretty much fully packed. She is a heavy trailer, let me show you. Like, it doesn't get much more stuff than that. There's a good shot for you guys. That front end is up pretty good. Now I was hoping to scale this thing, but we just don't have time. We're leaving early, early in the morning and uh, there's really no scales near us. Maybe when we get to Fredericton, we'll scale this thing and see what it weighs. So I did end up getting this trailer weighed um, two days after we landed in Fredericton and I came in at just about 9,100 pounds, which is actually more than I thought. We're at 40 and a half, so that's a three and a half inch squat on this side. Now, who knows how this thing's sitting on the road. We're on a little bit of a slant. There's always the crown of the road too. So uh, we'll average that out, uh, say it's squatting three inches. Uh, we were three and a half on this side, two and a half on that side. So a three inch squat 
is not the worst for a power wagon, really soft suspension. But what I am a little bit concerned about is how high this front end has risen. And uh, hopefully, like I haven't driven this yet, hopefully the steering's not uh, crazy loose and uh, hopefully it still feels planted, but uh, we'll find out early tomorrow morning. We are about to hit the road. We gotta pack up our lovely bed set here for the evening. She's an early one. She is an early one today. But uh, yeah, we got uh, distance to make up. Oh, just another fill up. very happy with that. I was thinking it'd be close to 30 liters per 100k just because just driving this truck around town is right around like 19, 20 liters per 100k. So, you know, putting all that weight back there only adds, well, there you go, it just dropped again, you know, 22.8 liters per 100k. Not bad. And we are 10 hours into this trip. So pretty good, you know, sample size for towing this. Now we are going to be going into the Appalachian Mountains or the tips of the, or the, the northern tip of the Appalachian Mountains. Now they're not mountains per se, they're more hills, but um, there will be some climbing. This truck will be revving like crazy. Um, so that'll be kind of fun when we get there. A couple hours we'll be there and I'll, uh, I'll let you guys in on the fun. This thing is just cruising at like 117K. RPM's pretty, pretty low. I'm impressed. Like there you go, 2000 RPM. 117 kilometers an hour. This truck is towing very, very well. We're about 11 hours into the journey and I am starting to become very impressed. All right, here comes a pretty good climb. So we've already dropped to 3000 RPM. And we're gonna try and maintain 109 kilometers an hour. We'll see how that goes. I think the Hemi should be able to do it. Okay, so we've dropped another gear. We're in fifth gear here. So just quickly about the eight speed. So seventh and eighth gear are both overdrive gears. One to one is actually in sixth gear. And then obviously fifth, fourth, and anything lower is in underdrive gear, um, if that makes sense. Oil temps still in spec. I actually haven't seen the oil temperature go above 110 degrees, which, uh, which I really like. Um, the transmission temp has been solid sitting right around 176 177 degrees at all times like so again we've been climbing for i don't know a good a good minute at least just buzzing at 4000 rpm and that tranny temp hasn't budged now our oil temp is starting to get high that's the highest i've seen the oil temp today we've been towing for 12 hours now um so yeah the oil temperature is getting uh, is starting to climb a little bit but uh, you'd expect that. I mean, this engine is uh, is working right now, and we're still not at the top. There you go. She bumped a little more. 115 degrees for the oil uh, temperature. Now this truck does have an oil cooler, so once we get to the peak here, start coming down. I guarantee that oil temp will drop to where it needs to be. And there we go. We just upshifted. So there's a good little pull for you guys um, with some weight behind this truck and um, not much to her. Obviously the engine was working pretty hard there, but that's to be expected. That's what the 6.4 Hemi's built for. It's, it's really a much more robust, stronger built engine than the 5.7. Nothing wrong with the 5.7, it's a wonderful engine, but the 6.4 just is really 
um, meant to be kind of beat on and it's really good at uh, dispersing high temperatures. Now, like I promised, the oil temp dropped right back down to 107 and to be honest, that's where it's kind of sat for the whole day, 105, 107, 108. Um, and you know, we've been towing for 12 hours now. And uh, yeah, so that oil cooler, you just saw it take effect there. Oil temperature got a little bit high and then it just really brought it right back down to where it needs to be. This thing loves her fuel. Nothing but the best when I'm towing. side of things. Now the Ram 1500s have had the ZF8s be this exact same transmission since 2013 so there's a little more experience on the Ram 1500 side and as far as I can tell people are very happy with them. You don't hear too too much um, you know, issues with them. Obviously they're not flawless. People are going to have some issues but it really isn't a highlighted issue of the truck so I think the ZF8 speed is a very good transmission and you know I think the fact that the transmission temp for 12 and a half hours now with a pretty good load behind it um, you know just goes to show that maybe it is also very capable in the heavy-duty world and I feel like Ram is going to keep putting these in the gas um, heavy-duty uh, trucks just because you know they're, they're great reliable transmissions and it's a uh, it's good to see all right we got another big hill here let's see how the 6-4 handles it we're gonna be pegged out 111 kilometers once again and uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, dropped into fifth gear there. Oh yeah, look at her climb, look at her climb. Pretty scenic out here, I'm not gonna lie. But uh, I wouldn't call this a mound by any means, but uh, it is a pretty good hill, and uh, it's definitely gonna put the Hemi in her place make her work for it that's for sure now we can see our oil temperature is already climbing we're at 104 when we started we're at 107 108 now we'll see how high that oil temp gets transmission temp probably won't even move probably stay right at 177 or 109 on the oil now we're staying steady at uh, just under 4,000 rpm keeping speed real nice actually and uh, we're almost at the top here. Oil temp's at 111. It's gonna keep climbing here. Again, tranny temp, solid as ever. Oh, oh! That's the highest I've seen it all day right there. 78 degrees, just for you guys. And uh, as we come to the top here. So there you go. Oil temp came up to 114. Now I guarantee you that'll start to drop right away. Once again, you know, very impressed how the power wagon pulls. I do think the tow rating on that thing is probably a little bit underrated. It probably could handle a lot more weight, but uh, as we all know, there's a couple factors, including the fact that the truck is actually lifted from factory. There's a disconnecting sway bar, which a lot of the rating agencies don't like, and that's why they kind of nuked the actual tow rating. The drive line itself is rated for 17,000 um, pounds, according to Ram. So there you go. Um, you know, this thing is, not a bad truck when it comes to towing however i don't think these trucks are necessarily primarily built to be towing machines so anyways as always guys if you did like the video don't forget to leave that thumbs up and if you like cool stuff like this don't forget to subscribe we'd love to have you guys on board anyways enough of me we'll see you on the next freaking video Mike, you